Hello, this is PSKV coming to you in the comfort of your home. Okay, make sure you hit the subscribe button, all right? Do that for me. Now, the hot topic going to be um, Ariana Grande and dealing with Bishop Ellis. That's right, Bishop Ellis and Ariana Grande is the hot topic that is going all over the world right now. I'm telling you, the bishop couldn't keep his hands to himself. That was me. Mm -mm. No, no, no. And what make it so bad, he was the MC. I tell you, he was conducting himself as an MC for our famous queen. That's right, Aretha Franklin. Now, how in the world that you the bishop, but now you want to become like you on mm -mm, the BET Awards and you want to be making announcements for the celebrities. Every celebrity that was there was given honor and they was in the house of the Lord. So it was not about getting up there making jokes and calling mm -mm -mm, Ariana Grande that she was from Taco Bell. You understand me? She was a food to eat. Now, go ahead now, Bishop. Now, you know you need to go somewhere and sit down. So, you know, that was a sexual remark. Mm -mm -mm. Now, I tell you, the, bing, the dong bells are ringing. Now, that is truth in spirit. Now, what is next to a food for a man when he's seeing a woman? You understand me? That he is lusting for. He going to think about food. So, he going to think about eating. That's what he was doing. So, he was giving sexual marks right then and there. I thought you was a fruit food. I thought you was a menu. I thought you was Taco Bell. But yet you got your hands gripping on her breast. Come on now, Bishop. This is all out of order. Come on now. And then you want to come in with your apology. And you want to come in and say, I apologize. Okay, I apologize due to the fact that it was a long service, you know, and everything was going. Look, Aretha Franklin's service was long due to the fact of her lifelong, I'm telling you, achievements, awards, and achievements that she have done with the equality movement. And that service was representing the long fight that we all had to get to the point that we are at today. So let me tell you, I had to watch it. Yes, it was had to because it was a must for me to also be part of the history because Aretha Franklin I tell you she fought the good fight with Martha the King Rosa Park I mean to the best down there with Jesse Jackson and it was a blessing to see Jesse Jackson even at the home going yes it was a blessing to see Jesse Jackson at the home going and health and strength and being able to stand and the beautiful blessing of even Tyler Perry was there I'm telling you it was Al Sharp and New York famous. He was there. Also, who walked with uh, Aretha Franklin in the civil rights movement and knew a lot about her life. It was a blessing to see those in legacy that know her. And even the testimony of Smokey Robinson, I mean, just blew our everybody mind to know Aretha from his childhood to even keep a friendship that strong. And you want to get up there and talk about, you know, some craziness about food. Come on, man. That, that, that is just crazy right now. Now, we want to look at a factor here. With, Anna, with Ariana Grande, a mouthful, Ariana Grande. Okay, now, the reason why I'm saying we need to look at this, you can see Fantasia in the black dress. And Fantasia is wearing this black dress due to the fact when it was dealing with Aretha Franklin BET Awards when it was given honor to her as queen. So now this is the dress that um, Fantasia wore. So now in the group of the team efforts of the coordinators that is dealing with Anna, um, with Grande. I'm going to just say Grande because I don't want to get tired to while I'm talking. Now Grande turns around with her group. They decide that this black dress could be all right because Fantasia wore a black dress, a short black dress when she was performing for the BET Awards on the benefit, due to the benefit of giving honor to the queen, um, Aretha Franklin. But one thing that was not looked at is the fact that this was a performance. This was not a home going. And also, Grande, Ariana Grande, also performed with Aretha Franklin at the president, at the White House. 
And when she did this with the White House, if you go back and look at some of the old footage, you will see that she is standing there with all her youth and all with a black gown on, long to the ankle. So now how in the world you going to come in now and now at the home going and wear something short? This was coming into now saying, it's okay, wear something short. She's young. She's a young lady and she don't know too much of this or that. But if you come in former, formal at the um the White House, you come in with, I mean, dress to the fullness in a formal wear. And you dress now with a gown on and you singing with the queen and sing with, um I mean, fabulous uh, uh, um celebrities that was there. Jill, Jill Scott was there. You understand me? Pally the Bell was there. These people was all up in there dressed to the extreme, not showing no skin. But here it is. Only skin could be shown if it was like a T-strap um dress that was still fully length gown. This is the part that we have to look at. All right, I want you to tune into what Smokey got to say because he in the same agreement that I am in right now. Good to see you. How, how was Detroit? How was the funeral? It was done very beautifully. There was another bit of controversy that Ariana Grande, some people criticized her wardrobe, saying that her skirt was too short and that at a funeral, it's not really the time and place for such fashion. Other people backed her up. Did you have any comment on that? Well, you know, uh, she's a young woman. She's a young woman and she's uh, doing her young thing. And, uh, yeah, I think it was inappropriate. Yeah. yeah, I do. I think she could have. I love her. I love her. I, mean, I think she's a great talent. And I think about it. somebody in her camp should have told me she was at the funeral. And not let that happen. But she probably she be, she should be a little more respectful and mature about her clothing well, options. She was trying to be disrespectful. <laughs> I don't think she was just trying to be disrespectful. It just it was just inappropriate. Okay. And somebody in her camp should have told her. Did, did you think any of it was um, overly political or, or no, inappropriately no, 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 because Aretha was a, an activist and she was a very strong woman. And they were just giving her props and letting people know that she wasn't only a singer, she was an activist and she was very powerful in the, in the civil rights movement. So I don't think it was overboard at all. Okay, but do you think that the president uh, and his comments about she worked for me, was that respectful? Well, what's he, what does he say? He said something stupid. Some are talking about that the service was politically too long or it was just too long. But let's talk about this here because for one thing, for the young people to recognize, for the civil rights movement, it was a long fight. We would not have the rights that we have today. And it's about taking it serious. Some people don't got so comfortable. They don't recognize the fight that we had dealing with the civil rights movement. And dealing with um, um, Aretha Franklin, dad who was in the church. The churches played a very big part. And her dad was a major part in the civil rights movement. He was fighting right along besides with Martha the King, Rosa Parks, your Abernathy, and a whole lot of the greats in dealing with even down to Jesse Jackson in his youth was right beside them fighting for this cause. So now when Aretha Franklin, she became a voice, an anthem for this here cause. Her and Mahalia Jackson both became very much dealing with the pioneer part of changing not just America, but changing history when it came down to music, to get messages, codes inside of the music. So when she left here, it was not just saying that we're going to talk about that this was a leaving of just oh, or just a, a celebrity. No, this was a world had to stand still because this woman who became queen of gospel, queen of soul music, became one of the icons to bring the equality of music into her language to address different people around the world and that music went around the world and I tell you brought church into a different order when it became R&B and then also gospel it was a lot of controversy but believe me the controversy was nothing compared to the measurement of the fight of the civil rights movement we would not have the rights we have today I'm telling you not just the civil rights movement 
movement, but also the rights for the equality rights for women, for females to get paid equality, you know, the equality of money, the equality mean for equality for everybody. That's what the equality movement was about, because even down to the females was being, you know, mishandled. They was not being respected. So black men, black women, no matter who it was, they was getting, I mean, hosed down with fire hose so she is one of those legacies that just left this world the blood of my shaking on my cycle the tongues coming out and i tell you right then and there ellis could not allow a praise break to go out because he was full of lust i have to say what i have to say a praise break should have been more in depth than what it was and each time the holy spirit was coming in to bring that praise i mean break in here it was that it was shut down it was a shunning down and those that his holy ghost filled they could feel it even down to i could see shirley caesar even feeling that shunning and that was from that spirit from ellis trying to shut it down controlling it instead of coming in to know that this was more bigger than he could ever imagine and all he was thinking about was his own back dealing with history you understand me this history is not just for ellis ministry this history was for everybody church everybody uh, um denomination everybody that is coming in dealing with religion even farrakhan showed that area because he was there and also rita franklin have stood by farrakhan you have to go into reading and knowing more about her legacy you understand because her legacy is deep and that why farrakhan was sitting on that front line because she was right there sitting on the front line with him we have to go deeper to understand history when it comes down to the black movement. Aretha Franklin was a prodigy child. And a prodigy child means you are born into your gift, activated into your gift. So even Smokey Robinson, who was a witness of that, he even saw Aretha Franklin at the age of five, six, seven years old, sitting at a piano. I'm telling you, and doing what she had to do. I mean, with music already built up in her. You understand me? Trained by a voice that her daddy was told that his voice was uh, um, the a million dollar voice his voice was I mean powerful so this was one that taught his own daughter how to sing yes there have been remarks about you know the things that was going on but we are not here to talk about negative things we are here to talk about the positive things and no matter what Aretha Franklin is being honored because she kept her daddy legacy alive she kept his legacy he, she kept Martha the King legacy alive she kept on fighting the fight that she was taught as a prodigy child raised in the church and even though she was still singing R&B she still kept her foundation of her roots of the church inside of her that was a major point that the world was standing still to see because she introduced us to another genre another genre of music that they never had even heard before so that is the major avenue when god is introducing things with music and she was one of the key factors that music was just pouring out of her with keynotes so back in that time when they were singing about love and the different things it had keynotes in that it had messages that was inside that music and now we have music today cannot even touch the legacy of the history of the music so so that's why that service was so long if you did not want to stay you could have got up and go but the ones that was watching is the ones that had a big mouth to say i saw tyler perry sat right there with great honor on the front line and he sat there i mean positioned himself and he did not budge he sat there and waited for his turn to get up and speak on that behalf and everyone else did the same thing the political office sat there and they waited just to wait and they didn't care if they had to fall to sleep and just take a nap for a second they did not want to leave that was the major avenue that we have to look at you understand me i remember when i'm one that was a blessing to go and visit um tyler perry studio um and it was me and my um, coordinator had went and it was his studio and we was the first two to ever go in at that time Parrot Tyler Perry was not there but he made sure that everything was set up 
for our visit at that studio. He made sure of that. And that's why I respect him to this day. He has lots of hospitality in him. And I saw the, 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 the man of honor sat there next to um, Silsie Tyson. Silsie Tyson. And he sat there with honor to give tribute to the queen.